Hello and welcome to our first ever Free Flow Friday. Now you'll notice there's only one of us this week instead of myself and Mark, it's just myself. The reason for this is because today's Free Flow Friday topic is gonna to be on all things hair care. Now I have relatively long hair, it's blonde, it's straight. It tends to be pretty easy to deal with on the surface, but as soon as I go below the surface, things just change. It's just impossible to manage. And we're doing four to five dives a day. We wanna talk about how to keep your hair healthy, manageable, and in a way that when you're diving, it's not getting all in your face and really annoying. If you've been here for a while, you know this might be something I've struggled with for quite a while. And I finally worked out kind of sort of a way to make sure that my hair stays healthy and manageable in the water. So I'm gonna share those tips with you today and that's why Mark's not here. He has short hair, he just goes diving, calls it a day and it's pretty easy. So we're gonna get into that video. I'm gonna break it into a couple of parts, pre-dive hair care, hairstyles, products I like to use, and then post-dive hair care. I'm not an expert, I'm just gonna put it out there. This is all trial and error. Obviously my hair is not perfect, nobody's hair is, um, but we're gonna see how it goes and hopefully this helps somebody who watches this. Cool. talk about is what I do before a dive. Now there's only a couple things I really do. I'm not that like particular with anything, but if I can, if I've got a fresh water shower or a hose or something like that, I'll try and wet my whole head with fresh water before I go into the salt water. This isn't such a problem if you're diving in like the cenotes or somewhere like that where it's fresh water, but if you're going into the ocean, the water is super salty and that is what tends to make your hair dry and brittle. So I like to wet it completely with fresh water. I did some reading on this. It says something like the fresh water will absorb into your hair particles and it means that the salt water is harder to absorb or something like that. If you're interested in the science, I'm not a scientist, that's something to look up, but that's what I've read about. And it says that that's something that should help make sure the salt water isn't absorbing too much into your hair. It's just wetting your whole head with fresh water before you get in. So that's the first thing I like to do. If I don't have a fresh water shower, Sometimes I just pour my water bottle on top of my head. It's not glamorous, but diving isn't really a glamorous sport. So I do that first. And then the second thing I do is I go in with some form of conditioner. Now my favorite is this one. This is the Stream to Sea Leave-In Conditioner. I get it in the bulk size because I have to ship it from the US. If you're in the US, it's free shipping or I believe cheap shipping. Um, and we have a discount code for this one. It's 10% off if you use Blue Rise and Diving. Now, this is something I really believe in is the Stream C leave-in conditioner is because A, it's reef safe. It's not affecting the reef. And B, it works a charm. Like actually it's fantastic stuff. You only use a little bit, just like one pump of the bottle and then just put it all over your hair and that's all you have to do. So that's usually the second thing I do. At this point, I've got my hair already in whatever hairstyle I'm going diving in and that's gonna be in the next part of the video. So I've wet my hair and I've put conditioner in it. That's pretty much all I do before a dive. So that's my pre-dive hair care. It'll be in a ponytail, in a top knot, in a braid, whatever you wanna have it in. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. Different hairstyles divers like to use when they're diving. So anybody who dives a lot might have a hairstyle that they put their hair in every single time. Mine used to always be a braid, but then at some point I just kind of gave up with the braid and just swapped it to a general ponytail or what I call the mop bun or a croissant bun or whatever anybody calls it. Um, those are my two go-to hairstyles. Some people like to do one ponytail on the top with lots of little hair ties going down to make sure that your hair is sectioned off in different sections. And it also means that all the strands are always together so they can't get tied around your first stage which sounds silly, but it's something I've seen. We were in the Philippines and one of my friends spent three hours having her hair unknotted after it got tied around the first stage. So that is not something I wanna have done. Uh, it didn't look like fun. I wouldn't wanna do that. So this is why I always make sure that I tie my hair up when I'm diving. Uh, if you're an instructor, something I do recommend is I always have hair ties clipped onto whatever bag I'm bringing diving. Not necessarily for me, but for whoever the students are that I'm diving with. It's their first time diving. 
they might bring a hair tie, but a lot of the time, especially kids, they'll come with their hair out like this and they'll jump into the water and it goes everywhere. And it makes your life hard and it makes their life hard. So that's a little bit of a separate thing that I like to keep in mind. But yeah, you also have people that like to do tight top knots. My hair is super kind of thin and stringy, so it doesn't stay in a top knot. If your hair stays in a top knot, it's a great way to protect it because you've got the conditioner in, keeps it all in one spot, protects it really well. Uh, there's people who are really talented hairstylists. I'm not one of those people. They can do like the two Dutch braids or two French braids or those braids that go into other braids or the braids above their head and all that jazz. I just don't possess those skills to be able to do that. If you can do that, I've heard that having two French braids in your hair is a really good way to keep it out of your face when you're diving. And it also keeps it away from your tank valve, which is just right behind you. So the three I would recommend as my top favorite ways to have my hair when I dive, A, a basic ponytail, just slightly above where my mask strap would be. B, what I call the mop bun. I've played some footage of that already. I'll put some footage of it in here. That's always a good way to tie up my hair. It keeps it out of my face above my mask so it's not hitting on the back of my head and it's really easy to do. And three, either a ponytail into a braid or two French braids if you have the means to be able to do that. So I've already mentioned a couple hairstyles and one product, which is the Stream to See Leave-In Conditioner, which is my holy grail of hair care. Um, but there are a couple other things I want to throw in there just as an example of a way that you could keep your hair out of your face. Now, with masks, having a strap that is not plastic is just the best thing ever. Number one, it slides over top of your head really easily. Number two, it does not get caught in your hair. On my mask, I've got a regular strap that's plastic and I've put a flap strap over top of it, which you can find at basically any dive shop ever. Scuba Pro has recently started selling these ones which come with the masks rather than the plastic straps and so have, I believe, Fourth Element. And those are really good as well. And yeah, they just slide over your head, which is super helpful. And I also really like these ones because they've got the snorkel clip as well. And here in Queensland, it is required to have a snorkel on every single dive. And if you're teaching, you also have to have a snorkel. So that's a really easy way to keep the snorkel clip out of your hair. So I really like those type of things, flap straps and neoprene straps for masks. Another thing I've only recently started using is in the summer I went to Cayman and a lot of people had on headbands and it was keeping the little flyaway hairs like these little itty bitty ones out of their face when they were diving which is also something I've been struggling with. So what we did is I tried out a couple headbands and I really liked them. So we've made our own Blue Horizon diving ones now. We've got really limited stock of these, but we're always willing to restock things if people like them. And all it is is a nice thin headband that you pop over top of all of your hair and then slide up and over. And you can put in a ponytail, braids, whatever you wanna do, but it keeps these top flyaways out of your face. And it's also not where your mask will go. So your mask won't get caught up in it, which is really nice. So we've recently come out with that. They're being sold on the shop. Um, we, I really like them. Mark doesn't have any clue. Uh, I should make him try one actually, but yeah, he has no idea. But I really like them and they got a lot of good reviews, just headbands in general, or even if you have a buff, I know a lot of people got those kind of during COVID times. You can fold that over and make that into a headband. That really helps keep the flyaways away. Another thing I use, just classic hair ties. I use the ones that are super stretchy um, and I always have bright colors because I lose my hair ties really easily. But these ones don't have any form of elastic band in them. They're just elastic in general. And I always keep a whole bunch of them on my bag. I think everybody's got a hair tie in some way, but those are always good to have about. And then the last couple of things I wanna say is this is argan oil. I put this in after a dive but I'll talk about that in post-dive hair care. You can pretty much find this at any grocery store. They're not super expensive and you just pop a little bit of it in your hair and it just makes sure that it stays shiny and untangled, things like that. And then a hairbrush. I don't have a special hairbrush. I think it was like a dollar at the dollar store, but just keeping one of those handy is also pretty good. So I tend to just put that stuff in my bag leave it until I need it, and then I'll use that as I go through my dive. So those are kind of the products that I use 
Obviously, everyone's got different hair, different needs, things like that, so you can adjust accordingly. But that's what I like to use for my straight, slightly thick, little bit stringy hair, and that seems to work pretty well. The final thing I'm gonna talk about in this Free Flow Friday episode is what I do after the dive with my hair. I usually come out of dive and it's a little bit all over the place, so I'm not really worried about it immediately because I have other things to worry about. I'm not trying to just do my hair right after I get out of the dive, especially when you're working in the dive industry. Do whatever you need to do first. Take your gear apart, things like that. It's not really that much of a rush. You do have that conditioner in it, which keeps it preserved for a little bit of time, but I try to make sure that it doesn't dry salty. So I'll rinse it out as soon as I can. Just pour some water on my head, get a fresh water shower, whatever you have available, just to rinse some of that salt water out. There will still be a little bit. I'm not doing like a full shower on the boat or whatever. I'm just rinsing it so that it doesn't get super salty and brittle as it dries. Then usually on the boat right back, my hair starts to dry. Totally fine, don't really care. I ignore it until I get completely home. When I'm home, I will put conditioner in it in the shower and make sure that it is hydrated, which I think is important, super important. Not totally sure, I've read that's really important and it has helped a lot. So I'll always put a little bit of conditioner in my, the ends of my hair after I go diving in the shower and rinse that out. And then once my hair is kind of that damp feeling, that's when I'll put the argan oil in it. And I always let it air dry or dry with like a microfiber towel rather than blow dry it. My reason for that is because I don't own a blow dryer, so it would be pretty hard to blow dry my hair without a blow dryer. But I have straight hair already, so I'm not straightening it or things like that. And then I make sure that when I go to bed, it's in some form of a protective style. I usually just put it in a braid, call it a day. Sometimes I'll put it in like a bun on top of my head and then secure it with a scrunchie so that it's protective around my hair. Now, I'm no expert. I do really basic things just so that I keep up with what I'm doing because I'm not trying to give myself a 300 step hair care routine. Otherwise, I just won't do it. So those are my main things. Rinsing before and after a dive, putting in as much leave-in conditioner as I possibly have, and then making sure I'm always conditioning my hair when I'm in the shower and that the ends are always hydrated and leaving it in protective styles. That's all I do. That's really it. I don't have too many things that I like to do with my hair. Now, mind you, if you've got super duper long hair down to like here, you might wanna put it in a hood when you dive or work out a whole different hairstyle, things like that, but that depends on the person. If you've got a pretty similar hair type to me, this is what works for me. This is all trial and error, what I like to do, what's easy for me, and what keeps my hair in somewhat of a manageable form. It's not perfect, but who is? I hope you guys enjoyed this Free Flow Friday episode. And next week, Mark will be back. We'll be chatting about something totally different. This is probably the only video I'll really ever do on hair care because it doesn't change that much for me. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. I'll try and answer them to my, the best of my ability. Keep in mind, I'm no scientist. I don't really know the science behind anything. I just make sure that I'm using reef friendly products and that whatever is working is working. Cool, see you next week.